In this video, we're going to talk about one of my favorite kinds of cases to do in the office, and that is the removal of third molars that are fully impacted in a patient who's about 16 to 17 years old, where we've got around 50% root development, more or less. Our patient for this case is a healthy 16-year-old young man who recently completed his orthodontic treatment and is now presenting for removal of his wisdom teeth on referral from his orthodontist. As you can see from the panoramic radiograph, he has four full bony impacted third molar teeth that uh, are fairly close to the surface and show maybe about 20% development of their roots. It is a mesioangular full bony impaction. You can see from the arrows I've indicated that there is bone visible uh, completely around the coronal portion of the tooth. Uh, for coating purposes, if we can see bone over about 75% of the tooth, we'll consider that a full bony because once you get in there clinically, you'll find that where the bone uh, does not appear radiographically is actually present but very thin. Uh, so around the distal, uh, distal buccal wine angle area of the first molar carry out through the papilla uh, between the first and second molar and then posteriorly onto the retromolar region. We need to be conscious of the buccolingual positioning of the distal extension of our incision over the tooth uh, because of the variability of the lingual nerve. We want to make sure that we are no more lingual than the central groove of the second molar tooth. We begin by placing a throw pack and retractors in order to isolate the area. We're going to use our surgical handpiece to sweep away the bone that's covering the tooth. And if we look at this radiographically, the bone we're going to need to remove is on the occlusal aspect of the tooth, but also extending onto the distal and mesial regions so that we can completely see the crown. Now, because this tooth is mesoangular and not quite as vertical, uh, in order to get the tooth out, since it won't come out in one piece, we're going to have to bisect the crown, uh, and then that bisection is going to carry down through the roots so that we can take out the tooth in two individual pieces. So we now begin our procedure using a straight surgical handpiece. In this case, I'm using a 702 straight fissure burr with lots and lots of irrigation and kind of using the burr as a paintbrush, just painting away uh, lightly uh, with very light pressure, just painting away the bone that's covering uh, tooth number 32. So I'm going to go over the full extent of where the tooth is hiding. Um, as I start sweeping away the bone, I will begin to see the tooth, and that will help me uh, uh, as far as where I'm going to be further removing the bone. I'm using a very light stroke, a very light uh, uh, pressure, and once I've found the uh, margins or the border of the crown, I'm going to be sweeping away bone, as you can see there, uh, on the uh, buccal aspect and a little bit onto the mesial, uh, basically creating what we call a trough. So this trough is going to be carried all the way around uh, the tooth on the buccal, a little bit on the mesial, and then distally we're only going to go as far as the central groove of the third molar thing uh, with the 46R elevator into that little mesial pocket that we created, a mesial trough and place the elevator into there and then very easily rotate uh, the mesial half of the uh, tooth, uh, crown and roots out of the socket. As far as my post-operative care regimen for the patient, we have them um, not rinse uh, at all on the day of surgery, but beginning the next morning with the chlorhexidine rinse again twice a day until it's gone, which should be 14 days if they use it properly, and also warm salt water rinses as much as they'd like, uh, flushing out the the clot and creating a dry socket. 